Hello guys, I'm Orbiter, you Welsh engineer, and welcome to part 2 of building your own space station tutorial. Okay, this time we're going to be doing, I suppose we could call this the habitat module, even though we're using a science base there. And you can see we have some satellite dishes on there as well for control and uh, just for aesthetic reasons really. Okay, let's get into the build. First thing, before we forget, let's get a probe core because we want to be able to control the module to dock it to the station. Now we need a docking port, and yeah, don't place it on top, place it on the bottom because we're going to have to build this upside down, just because that's the way it's going to sit on the rocket itself. Okay, now what we want is the science laboratory itself, place that on top, and then I think we use the Rocco, Man Rocco Max brand adapter here, so we can attach this modular girder adapter. And then on the side of that we'll attach one of the girders and use the offset tool to center it. That way it looks like a truss that you have on the space station that you can attach equipment to. And what we're going to attach to this? Well, antennas obviously. Uh, let's leave the big one because it probably weighs quite a bit and is going to off center the mass for your launch. I decided to put two of the smaller ones on there, one either side. And then the high gain antenna. The high gain, I'm going to pretend that is to control spacecraft that are coming into dock to the space station, just in case we need to. Even though most of it would be automated in real life and you wouldn't really need that, but I suppose you'd want short range communications between bases. And now, don't forget the solar panels and the batteries, just in case we're docking on the dark side of Kirby. Anyway, that is the module complete. All we need is some RCS thrusters. So get the center of mass up again, like in the last uh, tutorial, and put some fuel tanks on there. I'm trying to center the actual center of mass by there. I'm not happy with the placement of those RCS tanks, so what I'm gonna do by here, after attaching some of the RCS thrusters, and again, when you're attaching RCS thrusters, attach them at equal distance from the center of mass on either side of the center of mass. As such, I'm doing by here. Still, I'm not happy with that, so let's move the RCS tanks. That'll give us more room to move the RCS thrusters around. And hey presto, they're not in front of the windows. So let's go ahead, make sure everything's high and dandy, and then go and then attach the rocket that we built in the first episode. If you're not familiar with this, if you just started watching this one, I suggest you go watch the first episode of this tutorial where I go through building this rocket and using it as a sub-assembly. Again, don't forget to check the staging and don't forget to re-edit the fairing that we built because it, every module will be a different size and if only you have to reduce the size of the fairing, that reduces the amount of weight your rocket has to carry up. And obviously with everything you build, I suggest you label it like Space Station 1 Crew Module. Well, Crew, okay. I misspelled crew, but they go, they're Kerbals, they don't know how to spell English, they know no English. Okay, let's choose someone for this mission, I choose Dubert, because that sounds like an awesome name. And also, before we go, I almost forgot, don't forget to auto-strut everything, because the new parts you build aren't auto-strutted. It's probably better practice to do that when you're actually building it, the modules themselves. But anyway, once that is done... Let's go ahead, target the space station, and go ahead and launch. Now, you can align the orbits of the space station for a proper launch, but as long as you go into a lower altitude than the space station, you'll be fine. And the reason for this is because a spacecraft travel faster in orbit on lower orbit around Kirby than it does on a higher orbit around Kirby. Think of the moon, it travels around the Earth very slowly compared to the space station same principle and the reason for that is because we want the spacecraft to slowly catch up once it gets into orbit and then once it gets close enough it can do its maneuver to get the same height the only difficulty here is planning when to do that burst on getting a higher altitude towards the space station and that is when the trick of maneuver nodes come into play and again when you're doing your orbit burn don't forget to do half before and half after However, if you are staging, don't forget, Kerbal Space Program does not calculate these burn times exactly right, so burn a bit before. 
That way you can control your throttle at the end of the burn. Okay, now that we're in orbit, let's go ahead, add a maneuver node right in front of our craft, up to the orbit height of the space station, so we get the intersect node. You have to make sure you're targeting the space station at this point. Then what we can do is just move the maneuver road around. You'll probably see that the intersect markers are getting closer until we pass over our craft where we have to add another orbit. If you get to that point, add a couple of orbits until you get the intersect. And you see here, we're not on a perfectly circular orbit. So sometimes we have to add a bit more thrust to it to get the close approach markers again. Don't worry, just fiddle with the maneuver note. It might take a bit of time, but the more you practice with this, the more proficient you get with it, the better you become as a Kerbal Space Program player. How do you think Scott Manley became the best at this? Yeah, he uses calculations, and that's all a maneuver node does. He uses calculations, it just does it visually instead. So you can become an awesome dude like Scott Manley. Anyway, after burning your node, don't forget, half before and half after the node, depending on the burn time. And then once you get a close approach, we got about five kilometers. Once you get them close enough, point to retrograde. And at the closest approach, cancel out the velocity. Make sure the nav ball is set to target. You can change that, by the way, by clicking on the actual speed itself. But when you get close to the target, it should automatically, automatically change. And then once you've got the speed close to zero, point towards your target and burn. I think by here I do about, yeah, just over 30 meters per second if you're about five kilometers away. And then after you do that, don't forget to point retrograde, then time warp until you get your closest approach again. At this point, we're well within the one kilometer mark, which is pretty good. At this distance, you can initiate your docking procedures. And that's what I decided to do. If you were doing this for true to life, your rendezvous rocket would probably stay at a parking distance from the space station. Anyway, undock your probe, and don't forget to control from the docking note. That makes things a lot easier because then your docking port is always pointing at the space station. And just hit point to target. Now what you can do, what I was demonstrating by here, you can set up the nav ball so that the planet, the orange part on the nav ball, is to the right of you or to the left of you, depending on which way direction you're pointing at the space station. That way it can make it a bit easier to orientate. Right, we come in on the side of the solar panels and we want to point around it. So what I'm doing is I'm making sure we're pointing at target or using the SAS while we're coming around it. I know it looks like an awesome maneuver that I'm sort of like doing a skid around, but all I'm doing is using the SAS, passing to the right side of the space station until we can line ourselves with the docking node. And don't forget, right click on the docking node you want to target or dock to and set as target. And then all we're doing by here is trying to line the docking node going forward slowly by going left and right. This point, make sure you use the nav ball. What you really want is the prograde vector to be over the target. You can have mods to help you with this. You can even you download MechJeb and attach that to do the docking automatically. I won't go into that in this video, but we will do so perhaps in future videos. Anyway, let's move the crew about. Yay! Dubert is, has, is now company to Valentina Kermit, and for some reason when you look at the Kerbal cameras, the SAS messes up. Anyway, let's go ahead, deorbit the space probe, marvel at a station, and then decide what we're going to add next to it. As we watch the probe descend towards the ground. Okay, so this is the next one. This is quite a simple build. All this is going to be is a docking node. So again, get the space probe core so we can control it for docking. Get the docking port, put it upside down on the bottom of the probe. And then get an ore tank. Don't fill this ore tank up, which you can do if you're in sandbox mode. Which, by the way, is what we're doing this space station in. Now again, I'm using the Rocco brand Max Adapter and I'm attaching a standard size docking clampertron port and also the shielded docking port, which I thought would have been awesome if you want to attach a spacecraft at an angle on your space station. Right, here comes the tricky part, because that docking port will set offset the weight for a launch, 
What I'm going to do here is use the Kerbal Energy Redux mod. I'm going to attach a small tank, a small rocket. And look at the torque there, see? 3.95. What we want to do is offset the weight. Now, I decided to attach three of these tanks. Let's get them center. So then the Clampotron is on one side. Find that this doesn't work, so let's attach two tanks. And then let's attach one tank to one side to try to offset the weight. Okay, the torque is now 6, it's higher, but let's reduce the amount of monopropellant in that tank. And as you can see, we can get the torque down to 0 0.17 kilonewton meters. That basically means that there is not so much weight on one side, and this is why I always suggest, if you can, download and install Kerberal Engineering Redux mod. Now all we have to do is attach the RCS thrusters, again, same equal distance from the center of mass, and decide to add them on the side by here so they're not in the way of the docking ports. You can zoom in to get a more accurate suppose, positioning of your parts, especially the RCS, because they will cause your spacecraft to sort of like tumble slightly if you're trying to rotate and move side to side, because the weight is offset. All right, again, add your rocket, do the fairing bit, don't forget to auto strut everything, and then we're basically good for launch. After you save and launch the craft. Okay, same again, target the space station, get yourself into a 100 kilometer orbit, and then rendezvous and dock. But also don't forget to concentrate on your launch profiles because this can break, make or break your space station. <laughs> I'm assuming at this point you're proficient with your getting into orbit skills, your gravity turn, so I skip the video by here. And then we're on our way into orbit. And once you're in orbit, set up a maneuver node. Just in front of your craft, up to the height of the space station. Get a close approach marker. And you see this time we're really close. So no need to add orbits. And you can fiddle with the maneuver node. Using the mouse wheel on the prograde and retrograde. And move the maneuver node around until you get the height that you want. As you see I'm doing by here. You can get really close using this method. And don't forget you can adjust your maneuver node up, down, left and right as well as forward and backwards and moving the maneuver node around. Because this is 3D space, by the way. All right, 5.1 kilometers is fine. So let's go ahead and burn that, because that's easy enough to rendezvous and dock with. And then once you get close to your craft, as always, cancel your velocity, point towards the space station, burn 30 meters per second. You can use the map view at this point to keep an eye on your distance. And as you slowly burn towards the space station, you can see the closest approach getting closer. And then once you get the distance that you want, you can kill your thrust. Don't forget to feather the throttle though. Otherwise you will overburn and you'll have to point the other direction. Now let's say that you're not proficient with your actual docking. What you can do is use the main rocket to get a little closer to the space station. This is the same method as before getting close to the space station, but long distance, except you're doing this at a short distance, so you don't have the time warp. Although you can use physical time warp, which is done by holding the alt and using the uh, triangle bracket keys is best, or the full stop or cam and comma key. Once you're close enough, and dock control from the docking port and target the docking port, because we're in the right position. All right, at this point, I was worrying because I forgot to add solar panels to this, so. So if you're following my build blindly, then you've noted that you've out of electricity charge, electric charge. There is some on the probe core itself, which we hijacked from the spacecraft. However, if you, I decide to dock this fast, luckily it was a light module, so it was pretty good. And oh yes, I almost forgot, you can right click on your craft and rename it and also apply a space station icon to it. Right, let's deorbit this probe and get to the last module, which is the fuel, which is probably the most difficult one. Right, this one, we're building the fuel module. We've got large RCS tanks on here as well. This is just in case a spacecraft wants to refuel. Now it's not orange tank fuel size, 
However, I do think this is going to be a bit more challenging for the newbies. So again, get a space probe core, core. Attach a docking port. And you can attach docking ports on both sides on this one. Because we want to dock to the space station. And we want a large ship to dock to it. Okay, but here I've added a 2.5 meter service bay. And I'm using symmetry tool times four. And I'm putting the large RCS tanks in there. And again, docking ports on the bottom. Now we don't need to add RCS tanks to this, so we can just add the RCS thrusters. Again, use the center of mass, equal distance from the top to the center of mass, and equal distance from the center of mass to the bottom. Yes, have a play around with it. Try to find the best distance that you can attach them to, because look, we can attach the top RCS thrusters a bit higher up. Now again, this time, do not forget the batteries and the solar panels. In all intents and purposes, this module has finished, been finished, really. Now attach the rocket. However, we do not have enough Delta V to get comfortably into orbit. So what we're going to do here is experiment by adding fuel tanks. We have enough Delta V, however, the fuel tank is a lot heavier. So what I've decided by here is add a skipper engine, which is, has a much more thrust to weight ratio than the Poodle engine. Now we've attached that, it uses a lot more fuel, so we have less Delta V. So let's go ahead, add an extra small tank to this. And we're over the 4,000 meters per second mark. This means that we can get into orbit. Don't forget to auto strut everything, including the newly built fuel module. Right, pay attention guys, because this is important. Target the space station, fast forward time until the space station is just over the launch site, just like that and then launch okay this is the very important part you're going to be accelerating a lot slower because you're carrying a lot more mass from that larger engine and extra fuel tanks and also you have a big huge fuel tank on top which is full of fuel so you're going to turn over for your gravity turn a lot slower start your gravity turn a little bit later perhaps when you hit 100 meters per second or 50 meters per second but turn over slower this video is sped up, however you can see that the rate of turn on this one is definitely a lot slower. Now it is going to take a little longer to get into orbit with this, but don't worry, you're taking fuel up for your space station, so you can dock probes to it and refuel them, or a spacecraft to go into other planets. It's up to you. And that is one good reason for having a space station, if you're wondering whether we should have a space station in KSP, because well, there's no point other than in career mode it tells you to. Well, there is a point. You can use it for refueling. You can have some like ore processing plants if you want to deliver ore from the man from mining and stuff, and create fuel from that. And there are some awesome mods that you can use to resupply your space station with food supplies, oxygen, or some kind of super duper hyper powered engine which gives you warp power and you go to the stars and someday. Anyway, the future aside, this is stock at the moment. Again, set up a maneuver node to try to get your close approaches. By the way, the orange is the first close approach and the purple ones are your second one. So the second time that you get the close approach to the station. Normally the second ones aren't as close to the first ones. Okay, this time it looks like we got about 2.2 kilometers distance. That's pretty good. Normally, anything under 2.5 kilometers is brilliant because once you're under 2.5 kilometers in KSP, the other craft loads into the game. So then it's physically there. So the space station should be visible for you, which makes it a lot easier for you to target and get near to it. Anyhow, when you're doing your burn, make sure you do it on lower thrust and just give yourself a little extra time and feather the throttle to make sure that you get that maneuver node half before and half after. Don't go full thrust because that maneuver node burn time is calculated from going full thrust to zero thrust in an instant. And that's not practical when you're playing with an analog thrust. And I mean analog because you can adjust your thrust at different ratios I can see by the throttle down below. Right, now we're coming in for the close approach. Again, point towards the target after you kill your speed relative to the target. Get your close approach again and 
Then fast forward time. Be careful when you fast forward in time. I've done it many times before where you shoot past the station. And when you're close enough, cancel out your velocity. Control from one of the docking ports. It could be any docking port in this case. Because both of them are dockable to the space station. And then head towards the space station. I think we're heading on the right side of the space station. Where we're going to be docking to the port, empty port that we have on there. Let's fast forward time again. As you can see, even though we thrusted towards the space station with the RCS thrusters, we found out that we're not directly heading towards it. That is because we're in orbit around Kirby. In other words, we're not traveling in a straight line, we're traveling in an angle. So we're traveling in one direction, but the gravity's pulling us in the other direction. So we're making a circle around the Earth, or Kirby in this case, sorry. Anyway, we were almost right. We could have docked in the bottom docking port, and if you're not very good at docking, perhaps you could do that. However, the space station is complete. If you follow these instructions and mess around, have some fun. Get your Kerbal out on the EVA. Do some science. Anyway, if you enjoyed these two tutorial videos for building a space station, crank that like button like an engineer. Subscribe because I will be doing some more videos and tutorials. I'm Orbiter. Trust me, I'm an engineer. Teaching you to do Kerbal science and engineering stuff.